I'd like to tell you about the LLN, the Law of Large Numbers, and the CLT, the Central Limit Theorem, two of the most important theorems in all of probability theory. So to introduce these, I need to give you a definition. So we say that some random variables, x1 through xn, are iid, that is independent, and identically, identically distributed if they are independent, of course, they are independent, and the marginal distribution on each of them is the same. So, for example, in the discrete case, the marginal distribution on x1 equals the marginal distribution on x2, and so on, up to xn. All the marginals are the same, marginals on each individual random variable, and if this was, if they had a density, instead of if they weren't discrete, then you would put f's here, and these would be the marginal densities. So that's iid. And now for both of the theorems, we will let x1, x2, and so on be iid. And now for an infinite sequence of random variables, we say that they are iid if every finite subset of them is iid. So we will let this sequence be iid with mean. So we'll call their mean mu, right? So since they're identically distributed, then the expected value of xi is the same for all i. So let's just call that mu. And variance sigma squared, they all have the same variance as well. And let's suppose that the variance satisfies it's strictly positive and finite. So this is uh, some nice conditions here. And we will have first the law of large numbers, the LLN. So the law of large numbers is a very intuitive result. And it says that the average, as i goes from 1 to n, the average of the random variables xi converges to mu, the common mean, with probability 1, which we write as WP1. And what this means is that the probability of the event that this random variable converges to mu is 1. So, so i.e. the probability of the event that the limit i from 1 to n xi equals mu as n goes to infinity. The probability of this event so this, this event is the set of all omegas for which this limit is mu, and the probability of that equals 1. That's what we mean when we say with probability 1. Sometimes this is also called almost surely. Sometimes we write AS. So, what, so what's this saying? So, so this is saying if we take our random variables and we average them up and we get a an infinite sequence of them then it's going to converge to the mean to the expected value and this is very intuitive result for example so example say we had say these these xi's are all Bernoulli random variables so we've got a bunch of coin flips and we'll call the, mu, the mean mu to match our notation here. So mu is the probability of getting a heads. So remember, xi takes the value 0, 1. We'll call 1 heads and 0 tails. So if we flip the coin 
a whole bunch of times. Say we want it, say you wanted to estimate, say it wasn't a fair coin, maybe. Or we didn't know if it was a fair coin or not. So maybe the probability of coming up heads is not necessarily one half. And we wanted to estimate the probability of getting a heads. Well, the natural thing to do would be we we flip the coin a whole bunch of times and we take the average. And what the LLN tells us is that those averages are always going to converge. Well, with probability one, they're going to converge to the true mean, to the true probability of getting a heads. So that's a, a very intuitive result, but it's nice to know that this, in fact, does hold. And with a quite strong condition, there's other forms also. There's other forms of the law of large numbers. This is called a strong law of large numbers. There's also the weak law of large numbers, which converges in probability. And there's a form which converges in, there's another form which converges in a different way. So that's the LLN. And now we will, with this same condition, we have the same assumptions on our sequence, IID and so forth. Now we have the central limit theorem. And now if the LLM was intuitive, the CLT is astonishing. It is very surprising. So the CLT says that if we take, we multiply this quantity and over the variance, take the square root of that, times the average of the xi's minus the mean, so we average them, so I could put some extra parentheses here to emphasize that, subtract off the mean. So this defines a random variable for each n, and this converges in a form, in, in distribution, I'll explain what that means, to a normal random variable with mean zero and variance one. So what is it? What is this? What am I saying here? What does this mean? This means that. So roughly speaking, what this means is that if I were to, if n were very large, and I were to sample a bunch of times from this for these xi's, then the distribution of this this random variable, these samples are going to, to look like a normal distribution with mean zero. And more precisely, what this is saying is that the CDF, so each of these, for each n, this defines a random variable. And what this is saying is that the CDF of those, the CDFs of those random variables are converging to the CDF of a normal random variable with mean zero and variance one. So for each of these, there's some CDF, well, whatever it is, and those CDFs are converging to the CDF of a normal random variable. So for our coin flipping example here, right, when we had all these Bernoulli random variables, what this is saying is that, so I sort of alluded to this, what this is saying is that, say you took n really big, like 10,000 or something, or even bigger, but 10,000 is probably good. So say, say you flip the coin 10,000 times, maybe use your computer or something like that, so you can flip a coin 10,000 times, and you compute this quantity, and you then you get some number so maybe you maybe you get maybe you get this and now you do it again you flip it 10,000 times you compute this quantity again you get another number and you do it again you get another number and if you keep doing this 10,000 flips you get a number 10,000 flips you get a number keep doing this those numbers that you get are going to be roughly normally distributed.
And if you were to take n big enough, then they would be arbitrarily close to a normal random variable, what we call a standard normal. So this suggests that there's something truly, truly deep and remarkable about this distribution, this normal distribution. And this is just, this result is just the tip of the iceberg. Normal distributions have very, a very large number of very special properties and occupies a, occupies a very unique place in probability theory. So these are two very important, the most important theorems, the LLN and the CLT, the most important theorems, I would say, I don't think anyone would dispute, they're the most important theorems in all of probability theory.